Coming up on Small Town Big Deal. I love bologna sandwiches. Why one small town takes pride in being full of bologna. I've always wanted to do that. And then we go inside a bologna factory in hopes of making the cut. We were We were bad. Ah! Then it's a vintage ride with a guy who sure knows how to pick up. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, as we've traveled around the U.S., there is one thing that we have learned, and that is that Americans love a good celebration. Oh, we do. And we will celebrate just about anything. There's a small town in Michigan that loves to celebrate the fact that they are full of baloney. <laughs> Literally. Yale, Michigan, population about 2,000, is located roughly 60 miles north of Detroit. But the story of Yale is the story of a town once so hungry for self-identity that back in the 1980s, they could practically taste it. A lot of small communities were having festivals. And the town fathers and the chamber and the board said, you know, we, we want to do this too. What do we have that, you know, blueberries or whatever it might be, uh, we have bologna. And <laughs> boy, do they ever. They've been making bologna here for more than a century. Last year, Yale produced 25 tons of it. Mmm, yummy. That's why in 1989, they cooked up the idea of a bologna festival. For one weekend every July, Yale's hometown hero is recognized for being a cold cut above the rest. It's almost turned into like a family reunion. A lot of kids come home, a lot of families are here. And no homecoming is complete without its own king and queen. I am definitely full of bologna. And what's a bologna festival without bologna? You'll find it prepared many different ways. Grilled, fried, or... You have to have bologna on Is it good? It's awesome. Okay, well give us two. Cheers. <laughs> so you say bologna? I say bologna. But you say bologna. So how do you know whether it's bologna or bologna? Or what you're going to say when? I think it's a lot of bologna. <laughs> That's good. At times, the festival is as much about eating bologna. Welcome to the bologna ring toss in Yale, Michigan. As it is about throwing it away. That kid is a bologna tosser now. We come up with the bologna ring toss. We get different age groups. We give them a ring of bologna, and uh, as far as you can toss that baby. 132. OK, let's loosen up. Yeah, yeah, loosen up, loosen up. Can't we have like a 50 plus category? <laughs> oh, she's got the speed. You got some rolling action there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is doing the Jackie Gleason. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> Not so good. 100. <laughs> you know what else you can do with bologna? <laughs> hey, you better put your arteries on high alert. This will really take the cake. I've never heard of a bologna cake. Rodney? Yeah, no, never. If Yale, Michigan is the Harvard of processed produce, well, then Jerry Armstrong and Jill Davis are researchers seeking ways to spread bologna's appeal across the culinary continuum. My mouth is watering. We're helping them out before they share their latest finding with festival goers, a bologna cake. We start with our sliced bologna and we layer it um, with our cream cheese. So it's a layered cake. It is a layered cake. Every other layer will be cheese and every other layer will be cream cheese. How, is that thick enough? That's perfect. And then go ahead and put another layer. Another layer of bologna, another cheese. Is this a Swiss? That is a Colby Jack. Colby Jack. It's like you guys have been doing this your whole lives. <laughs> no. Trust me, we haven't. Yeah. <laughs> kind of reminds me of, of, of plastering something. <laughs> I knew it. OK, my frosting is smooth around the edges. And Jan's kind of looked like a squirrel trounced through it. 
Not bad for our first cake, huh? No, you no, guys look great. It's beautiful. Long before there was plumbing, outhouses like these were used to relieve oneself. Today at the Bologna Festival, they're used in its biggest spectacle, the outhouse race. The crowd, fully flushed with excitement, looks on as two teams compete, pushing their outhouses down the street and back. The first team back wins, and to keep it authentic, someone sits inside. It's kind of cramped in here. Rodney and I are signing up to use a toilet like never before. Grab a toilet paper! Here you go, Dan. I just got a few squares. All right, let's get this one set away. Okay, here we go. On your mark, get set. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! You know, I have to admit, I've never been so nervous sitting on the can before. We're coming into the corner! Oh my goodness! I hey, I can't believe we're this close, but we're at least in it. So we're out ahead. I'm uh, sitting pretty now. Oh, eat my outhouse dust! She had some studs pushing her over there, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, good match, baby. <laughs> it may not always be considered the most heart-healthy food, but the truth about bologna is it keeps the heart of one small town strong. Coming up next on Small Town Big Deal, we go inside a bologna factory in hopes of making the cut. Oh, you look at it, it's all wimpy at the end. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. Well, we have just seen how the people of Yale celebrate their beloved bologna. But what does it take to make a meat that meets or exceeds the high standards of a picky palate? I bet you didn't think I could say that. I totally thought you were going to blow it. Well done. <laughs> well, we're about to see the process piece by tasty piece. That's really good. It's one of life's greatest mysteries. What exactly goes into making high quality bologna? For the answer, we came straight to Yale's first lady of lunch meat, the queen of cold cuts, Nancy Roy. You must be really good at telling if people are full of bologna. <laughs> if I'm not good at it, I'm gonna make sure that they are full of bologna. <laughs> oh, good answer. Nancy is co-owner of C. Roy's Meats, a Yale institution that's been churning out bologna rings, sliders, chubs, and more for nearly a hundred years. Your bologna actually is full of bull because... That's right. That's right. <laughs> Explain that. Bologna is made strictly of bull meat because bulls are leaner, they're more muscle, so there's less waste to them. Their bones are big, but you don't have to throw the fat away. My bones are big, but I have a lot of fat. So well, you have a lot of marbling. It's not fat, oh. dear. It's marbling. It's not, I love it's not fat, dear. It's marbling. You are my new best friend. I am so using that. It is not fat. It's, it's marbling. It's marbling. What do you all do that makes it different or yeah. special? I, I'm thinking there must be like a, a oh, there recipe. Is. There is. There's a very special recipe. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to tell you the ingredients. <laughs> Take your pick of what size you'd like. Oh, golly. Uh, All this talk had us both chomping at the bit to get our bologna on. Oh! <laughs> are you mad at me? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just trying to make you look thin. But you are thin, but thinner. Thinner! I think they have sharp knives at this facility. A warning to our vegetarian viewers, this might be a good time to go and grab some broccoli. Wow, now here is some hanging bait. Oh, wow. <laughs> Veteran bologna artisans Nathan Muxlow and Scott Butler start our tour in the cooler. This one right here, this is next week's bologna. Wow. This one this one hung 850 pounds. And so the hanging makes it more tender? Yeah, what it does, it breaks it down, it dries it, and brings the marbling out in it and tenderizes it, the uh, aging process. So that's like aged beef? Aged beef, yep. Okay. Ready to get your hands dirty now? Oh yeah, let's yep. go. I'm ready to make let's some Let's make bologna. some bologna. Did he just say bologna? Let's make some bologna. Okay, so there's a city in Italy called Bologna, but here in America we eat bologna, Rodney. There's no E in it, Jen. C. Roy's bologna starts out with all that good lean bull going into the grinder. Oh, man. From there, it's on to the chopper. 
That's like my Cuisinart times 10. <laughs> Where their closely guarded recipe of spices gets added in. This is a secret ingredient. A secret ingredient. That smells good. Toss in some powdered milk, a little water. Put the hood down. And after a few minutes of getting whipped into a sticky meat paste, this concoction is loaded into a sausage stuffer. Hold on, like put one hand down here and one where you got. Yeah, just like that. Ah! Don't make that. Oh! I screwed up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But... Ah! <laughs> did I just scream like a little girl? I think I did. I want you to try it. Oh, I'm gonna be terrible at it. Oh! <laughs> Not as easy as it looks, is it? <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Sliders accomplished. Next up... Let's make some hot dogs. Hey, finally. Oh, I've never met anybody who likes hot, hot dogs as much as Rodney Miller. Oh, it's twisting it. Yep. This is like in the cartoons. No, 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 no. <laughs> let me get you Wait, started. Wait, let me see this face. You knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm scared. Oh! What, what am I doing wrong? Looks like a lot. <laughs> Rodney made about 15. I made... Who's <laughs> egg? Man, that was, we were... We were, we were bad. Mess. Obviously, I'm a whole lot better at eating hot dogs than making them. Into the oven she goes. Everything then goes into a hickory smoker for a couple of hours. And presto changeo. Only a different color now. Yeah. <laughs> These culinary masterpieces are then finished off with a steamy hot water bath. And the last stop, the cooling tank. All that was left now was to sample the merchandise. Hmm. First time to smell like a fine wine. It's the first time I've had like hot bologna like that. Mwah! It just goes to show in bologna, as in life, Sometimes the old ways are still the best. It's um, something that you just don't turn your back on. Yeah. As you can see, I'm tearing up just thinking of it. Oh, I know, I see. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll show you some rare treasures and the popular history buff who preserves yeah, them. Everything in here is old, except for me. Yeah, I was going to say, speak for yourself. <laughs> Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We are in Leapers Fork, Tennessee. Population about 650. And what brought us here is a guy from another small town in Iowa, though. In reality, he's a very big deal. And I'll tell you what, you're going to be glad you picked this episode to watch. In this quaint rural village near Nashville, we met up with one of their most famous residents, Mike Wolf of the History Channel show American Pickers. When it came time to house his treasured motorcycle collection, he built a Morton building on his property in these Tennessee hills. Since Morton Buildings is one of our longtime show sponsors, they arranged for Rodney and I to meet Mike, see his amazing collection, and tour like. what he and Morton had dreamed yeah. up together. There's no tractors in here. <laughs> no tractors, sorry, but... So why Morton? When I first started doing this about 27 years ago, it just seemed like every other building I was in was a Morton building. <laughs> All the things that are in here are very special to me in one way or another because I come across so much stuff. So I wanted to build something that could house those things. Did you design? Yeah, I mean, I had a say in every aspect of it. I wanted high ceilings because I knew I was going to hang things from the ceiling. So tell us what you want to do. And I said, well, I want to put some motorcycles in there. He's OK. I wanted the exterior to be very simple. Why do you like bikes so much? The first thing I ever found and sold was a bicycle, and I was about five years old, and I used to wander around the neighborhood, and this bicycle was behind this garage, and it had tons of weeds all over it, and I just asked the guy, I said, can I have this bicycle, you know? And he goes, yeah, and I pulled it home, and all I did was I wiped it off, I remember, and then I think my neighbor helped me put some air in the tires, and then this older kid came down the street, and he goes, what do you want for that bicycle? And I was like, Five dollars, and he goes, he, bought, he paid me for it. <laughs> and the hook was set. Yeah. People collect what reminds them of their childhood. You know, I grew up on a farm, and I, I, I wanted that closeness to tractors brings me back to my childhood. Yeah, but I can't imagine walking through life without this passion. Oh, I know. It's like Mike and Rodney were separated at birth. One went the motorcycle route, the other the tractor route, but the same passion. 
How has American Pickers changed your life? When people come up to me that don't collect anything and they're like, you know, I want to start collecting stuff, you know, you've really inspired me to, to look at things a different way and to appreciate history a different way. You know, it's more hands-on history. Like, I was the worst student, and they put me on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine like three years ago, and the guy was interviewing me. And I go, I don't even know how to spell entrepreneur, man. <laughs> E-N-T. -E there's different types of collectors. Yeah. No, so do you know tractor guys like that? Oh yeah. My dad bought five new tractors in his life and I have one of them, my brother has one, and I'm trying to find another one. Wait, 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 here's your chance. What are you looking for? Yeah, 574 <laughs> diesel with a bar axle. That, that's pretty rare. So. Okay, what year is it? It's 1972, he bought it okay. in October 6th. Was, oh, you want his tractor? His yeah. tractor. Oh my gosh, I thought you just want that model. No, no, no. No, he I found the model. Can't. Yeah, but he wants oh, to find okay. that one. Yeah, I well, have you one. Are, you are going yeah. waste deep want to. I want to. I want to drive that tractor like I did for years you know, through the fields. and I'll call you if I find that tractor. Who knows what will come across. Yeah. That's right. So now Rodney has Mike Wolf from American Pickers looking for IH stuff for him. I love the country. That's a sweet deal. This is a very rare bike. It's called a Vincent Black Shadow. This guy knows and, his um, motorcycle, so and he's one speed. impressive historian. Uh, right here, this is the 1944 Harley Knucklehead. Uh-oh, I can world see world. what's coming. Whoever restored this bike did it lovingly. I've always wanted to ride in a sidecar. Oh, you got to ride in a sidecar. I've because never done it. Okay, <laughs> what's she gotten us into now? It is like being in a rocket. I know, isn't it wild? Can you believe it? Mike Wolf is letting me drive his Vinny's motorcycle with Jan beside me. So she's talking too much and giving me too much grief. Is there, can I pull a lever? Oh, is there, is there an ejector seat on there? No. Give it a little more gas, a little more gas. There you go. Oh, too much. There you go, go, go. Woo! <laughs> you did it! Rodney has this. He's got it. Oops. I, uh... <laughs> what happened? I, I pushed the clutch the wrong way and I had my foot on the brake to stop because I didn't know where to turn around. Because we have this really hill, big hill. Big hill coming. <laughs> Don't even ask me if I want to sell this. <laughs> this one yeah. is not for sale. This is one of those things that makes everything worthwhile. You know, you got your family, yeah. you know, your community, your church. And your motorcycles. Yeah. It's like keep keep all that close. Keep yeah. all that close. As we drove away in his vintage car, I thought, what a great time we had. We saw an impressive historic collection housed in a fantastic customized Morton building, and we found a new friend. That's three treasures that won't soon be forgotten. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. It was so special having Mike Wolf on the show. Yeah, for all of us who have watched his show, we really know how much he loves collecting. But we found out he also likes sharing it, too, and even letting me drive one of these prized motorcycles. Yeah, and he stayed so calm when it seemed like we might have broken it. So thank you for the hospitality, Mike. Yeah, and thanks to Yale, Michigan, and for their great bologna festival. You know what I found out? I'm pretty good at tossing it. You, know, you are, but <laughs> we're pretty bad at making hot dogs. In fact, atrocious, really bad. I think they're still cleaning up the mess we made. <laughs> I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when, once again, we celebrate the great stories from across America. You know what they call a cow that can't give milk? A milk dud. <laughs> Wait, I smell gas and I see smoke, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! We've been sampling way too many things. It's tough to keep your weight down on small town big deal. <laughs> <laughs>